Well, this fall, one of the things you'll need to be doing on your farm is taking some soil samples, but the information on your soil sample is not the same from one company to the next. And when you say, I just need a soil sample, well, you have to tell the lab what you want. Now, one of the important things that many guys leave off is the cation exchange capacity. We wanted to discuss that today. Well, cation exchange capacity is super important. And if you don't know what it is in every single field you farm, I hate to say this, but I'm gonna have to scold you a little bit. You have to know it. Here's the reason why. With cation exchange capacity, it will tell you roughly how much nitrogen your soil can hold. So if you don't know this, just write it down. Just take 10 times your CEC, 10 times your cation exchange capacity. So if like, for example, in this field, if we had a cation exchange capacity of 15, 15 times 10 means we can hold about 150 pounds. If let's say there's already 20 pounds of nitrogen in the soil, that means we can apply 130 pounds. But Darren, we wanna go for 200 bushel corn. So I'm gonna put 200 pounds of nitrogen out. Can I do it? Well, eventually, yeah, over several <laughs> applications. That's what I've had to do. I've got a field that I call the blank slate where I've got a cation exchange capacity as low as 12 and a half. Well, this year I'm gonna have 170 bushel corn, I hope, or maybe even more. And to put on enough nitrogen to feed that crop, I've got to do it in multiple applications because I can only hold about 120 or 130 pounds each time. So I'm putting out a little bit in a side dress. I'm putting some out at planting time. I'm just being very cautious. And you know, in those lower cation exchange capacity soils, you don't want to do fall application. You want to try and do it all in the spring and as your crop is going to use it. Because if you've got a light soil, there just isn't enough holding capacity to keep that nitrogen safe and protected. So that's why you have to change your practices up based on that cation exchange capacity from field to field. We've got some heavy ground. Hey, you know what? It's fine. We could probably put the nitrogen out in the fall or put it all out in one shot in the spring. Either way, we'll be okay. So here's the reason why this is such a big deal. If you put on too much nitrogen, where does it go? Well, it's not gonna go anywhere if you don't have rain, but assuming that you have some rain, that nitrogen's probably gonna go down into the soil, meaning you lost it, you wasted money, number one, and number two, it's gonna end up in somebody's groundwater. When that happens, sooner or later, we're gonna end up as farmers with more regulations. And Darren and I were recently in Denmark where we went to a couple of farms and before they can apply any nitrogen, before they can apply any manure, before they can do anything in any field, they have to give a full report to the government. How would you like to farm that way? Well, that's the direction that we're headed down. If you don't know your cation exchange capacity, and if I don't know my cation exchange capacity, we're in trouble. And all I'm saying is we've got to, to some degree, regulate ourselves. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with a situation in the US like they have in Denmark, where the government is telling you how to farm. And that's not where we wanna head. So you may be saying, wait a minute now, I've got this lower cation exchange capacity, maybe a 15. I think I need to have that higher so I can put on a little more nitrogen in one shot or at least keep my nitrogen that I am applying a little safer. But what is cation exchange capacity and, and what makes up cation exchange capacity? Well, cation exchange capacity is the holding capacity of your soil. It's your soil's ability to hold nutrients, to hold water, even to tie up some chemicals that you may apply, soil residual type chemicals. So what that is made of, the cation exchange capacity, is the type of clay that you have in your soil, and the amount of clay you have in your soil. And those two things you really can't influence without a big dirt mover switching the soil that's in your field. What you can change is the third component of cation exchange capacity, and that's your organic matter. So you can raise the organic matter levels in your soil by doing less tillage, raising higher residue crops, using cover crops. There's a number of practices that you can do on your farm to over time raise that organic matter. Now you can't change that you know, just overnight. It's not gonna go from a 2% to a 5% overnight. But over a long period of time, you can just keep doing that. Maybe you can raise it a quarter of a point a year. That could be a goal to say, I'm gonna do everything I can to try and start raising that. So, you know, over a period of time, you can raise it a point or two points or three points. We've done that on some fields in our farm and it's made a world of difference in crop production. Well, once again, cation exchange capacity is the holding capacity of your soil. You have to know that for every field on your farm because otherwise we're really concerned about more government regulations in this country. If we as farmers over apply our nitrogen. With soil testing, it's very important to do this not every year on every single field, but at least do some good soil testing on your farm and make sure you get your cation exchange capacity numbers. One other thing you want to pay attention to on your farm is weed control. We'll show you how to eliminate this tough weed coming up next.
In this video, we're going to state what is meant by the term cation exchange capacity, and then we're going to talk about its importance, which you can actually see illustrated in that introductory video there. Um, farmers can really save a lot of money, but more importantly, we can relate this to earlier studies on our environmental option of eutrophication, which again is caused by excess nitrogen being uh, carried in, in rivers during rain or, or going through the groundwater and being carried into, into lakes and causing eutrophication, too much nitrogen allowing for these algal blooms, etc. So if we know the cation exchange capacity of our soil, we can try to minimize any of that nitrogen being carried off and causing those environmental issues while at the same time saving money for the farmers. Now, in the introductory video, they gave you a definition. It's not as exact as we want for IB, so this is our, the one you want to use. Um, it simply is the amount of exchangeable cations, so metal ions that have lost electrons, or metal atoms that have lost electrons in clay. And so that's important for this. Clay is actually what will be negative. I'll show you that in a minute. And then the larger our value, the more cations the soil can absorb and make available to plants. So we'll put a plant there, we'll put a particle of clay there. And clay is naturally negative. It has, um, you know, essentially it has some extra negatives on it or through usually losing protons, hydrogens. Um, there's often some carboxylic acids and things that are inside the clay and carboxylic acids, some of their hydrogens can ionize, leaving you with the negative um, ions in it. So if they're negative, in your soil you often have um, a few key um, sort of minerals that are essential to plant growth and health. So let's see what happens here. Let's try and represent this with an equation. So a clay with a negative charge, so we're just putting clay minus, and this is actually how they have it in a mark scheme in a previous exam. Uh, so just writing the word clay and then a minus to show it's a negative charge, plus an M plus, and the M representing a metal cation, so like these three here, and equilibrium arrows, which I can't really make in this software, will then make clay M solid. So what does that really look like? Well, what that would look like is um, the active site is negative, this is positive, so it attracts it. So you end up with these ions that are now sort of attracted and sort of attached to this clay now. So this would be the clay and solid. Uh, so the, the positives and negatives start to balance each other out, and so we'll write it as neutral um, in, the, in this equation. So in the second equation here, we start with this clay particle that has the metal cations on it, and then we have another ion come in. And I just see there's a typo there that should be a, a plus here. So this is M plus, and then this little tick up here, M plus prime. That, that's just suggesting that this is another type of metal. For example, in this case, I'll use a sodium ion. So this green one here. So this one's going to come in, and sodium is uh, a, one of the more reactive ions. So what it will do is it's more reactive than magnesium. So at this uh, active site, it will actually displace the magnesium and the magnesium will come off and go into solution. And so now we have this clay bonded with the M prime um, instead of this one. So that can present, um, you know, that's good and it can be bad. So let's sort of explore that. So if it comes off, um, then it goes into sort of the water in between the soil, which is what we call the soil solution. And from there, it can kind of go two routes. Um, in, in one case, which is the good case, um, this is what you want to have happen, is sometimes you want that magnesium to come off and become accessible to be absorbed by the plant's roots and then be used to actually build the plant itself. Uh, but sometimes, for example, if we were to add too much sodium, if, you had your, um, if your soil was starting to become salty, um, then most of your ions are going to be displaced quite quickly. 
there will be too many in the solution at once for the plant to absorb at once. And those extra ones will end up being leached away from the soil. And what we mean by leaching is they'll either go into the groundwater where they're not accessible by the plant or it's going to be carried away um, you know, downstream and then you know, p um, be carried to a lake or something like that. So that would be a bad thing. To, so you, the, the balance really is where you want your soil to hold on to these vital um, metal ions, um, but you want it to release some of them as the plant needs them, but not have them all be lost because you want to have some reserved on here and you want to have some regenerated that are useful for the plant so that the next uh, crop you grow is able to have um, what it needs to grow. So why is this sodium not necessarily very good? Well, potassium, calcium, and magnesium are essential for plant health, uh, whereas sodium and aluminum are not. So if you were to explore this a little more deeply, um, calcium, um, if you have a calcium deficiency, all of your new growth, you're going to get sort of weird shaped leaves. And so they're not going to grow as well as they should. And if you don't have enough potassium in your soil, uh, those leaves will start to turn yellow and some of the parts of it will die. And a similar problem for um, magnesium, sorry, I'm going to try and scroll that. There we go. Um, you can see here again a yellowing problem. And, uh, you know, this is going to reduce the efficiency of photosynthesis. Um, so that your plant's just not going to produce as well as you would like. So you don't want a whole bunch of these sodiums and aluminums coming on and displacing all of these um, vital nutrients. So it's sort of like a balancing, maintaining the, the soil balance or the, the, the health of your soil. So just to summarize, um, the cation exchange capacity, um, that's the amount of exchangeable cations in the clay. And so when you get that report, they'll measure the different types of ions. And then you want to sort of pay attention to the ones that are vital to your plant. Make sure those hot numbers are highest. Um, and then that means um, it's going to help out with your soil. And then you hopefully want lower levels of these other ones.